do anything. David was sinning. It, it was all David's fault, from what I could tell. But but Jeff has so much embarrassment from it that he like didn't want people to know. Like he's like shameful. He's like because so. his uh, like a friend of his and I think his dad like you're a dumbass. I listen to a lot of I listen to a lot of stuff. I think in the past year no, nah, this is not true. It's not the past year. I think that the primary way that I absorb information and it's been this way for a while. The primary way that I absorb information is from uh, listening to people speaking. I know, you know, some people be like, well, yeah, of course, duh. Um, don't do this thing to me again. But I think that the, that's been something that's been happening more recently. Maybe not the last year, but maybe the last decade or so. I, I, I almost, I guess I feel like You know, what, what can you use your ears for, right? You can listen to music. Um, or you can listen to, you know, ambience. You can listen to ASMR. You can listen to um, people talking. Podcasts, etc. cetera. Uh, not too much unlike what what I've been doing uh, over the past year or so, but so I listen to stuff, and I guess I feel like it, there's a missed opportunity almost every time as I'm just kind of going through life. If I'm not listening to something, if I, uh, if I'm doing something at work or, you know, making food or, uh, doing anything that doesn't engage my ears specifically, uh, I feel like it's a giant waste. My fingies turned blue. Um, Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Side effect number two. Your fingies turn blue. And they fall off. But just up to the first knuckle. So you get to keep all your fingers. They're just shorter. You just get shorter fingers. Which, you know... You lose some agility, but you actually gain some strength structurally. Gain the same the same diameter. And they're shorter, therefore they have more structural integrity. You can really poke stuff. Um, so I see it as a lost opportunity every time I am not listening to something, and then. In addition to that, I'm like, well, I gotta, I gotta keep absorbing information like as much as I can and hoping that that information triggers some sort of response in me, um, sparks something, uh, because I, I, I kind of really like the feel of these things. Wow. Oh, 
I froze there for a minute. I don't know what happened on y'all's end, but um, anyway, so I've been listening to a bunch of stuff, and it's been like I don't, I I don't want to be an asshole about stuff, but like, man, I don't know what. I don't know. I am puzzled. I am becoming less and less a part. I feel like I'm becoming less and less a part of the world. And that's, you know, age naturally does that. And then, but also in the events of the past year or so, um, not just um, COVID, but we can at least... um, Rejoice in the fact that uh, Derek Chauvin was found guilty on all counts. It'll be interesting to see what the sentence, sentencing is, because obviously we've we've been in this position before, and we've had some really light sentences. Although he was he was convicted of murder, so. fingers crossed um, if when you lose your fingers at the first knuckle yeah you can still cross them it's a little more difficult um, anyway so I'm listening to all of this stuff everything everything I can get my hands in try, trying to be uh, broader well I try to go broad and then go deep, find something that interests me and then go deep in that. Right? So I wouldn't immediately go out and buy, you know, all of the volumes of uh, Proust's Remembrance of Things Past, nay, Search of Lost Time. I might buy, you know, In a Budding Grove, uh, read it, see if it tickled my fancy and then um, go further. I've talked about this before too, like with TV shows, right? Like I give almost everything three episodes. I mean, unless it's really bad. Like I've only, I think I've only walked out on like maybe two movies in my entire life. And one of them was UHF with uh, Weird Al Yankovic when I was just a lad so you know in being just a lad you'd think that my tolerance for crap would be uh, pretty high but not so um So I, I'm listening to stuff and I'm listening to what's popular as well as what I want to listen to. Uh, and I'm not saying that those things don't ever intersect. They do sometimes in the, in the strangest ways. Um, and there are things that I just never... Example. Um, there's a show on Netflix called The Circle. Heard lots of people talking about it. Seemed to me like um, a tremendous waste of everybody's time. And also I couldn't really get over the fact that uh, they go through the expense of the premise of the show. I guess I can't really talk about this without explaining the premise of the show. The premise of the show is a certain number of people come together, live in a building, but never see each other. They're never, they never see each other. They only communicate via um, a social media platform called The Circle. Uh, and they can choose to go in as themselves or they can catfish. And the goal is, you know, they, they vote each other off survivor kind of style. Uh, and the last person standing wins uh, a sum of money. Um, 
so the first thing that I thought was like, well, they never see each other. Well, what's the point? Like, why are, why even put them in the same building? Um, like, why not just do this? You know, you, you, you could have that show and just do it, you know, with people all over the world. Wouldn't matter. Um, turns out it's for dramatic effect. Uh, and, and there is something about, like, I found myself as I was watching, kind of thinking like, well, uh, ostensibly, at least the way they make it seem, it's like this person is in the apartment directly above this other person. I guess it's also to keep them isolated from uh, news. They're not, they're not allowed to, like, uh, communicate with the outside world. So I guess that's, that's that. Uh, just answering my own question. But, um, oh no, this is not, this is not what I expected. This is, uh, I, now I'm hoping this falls off. But there would be times when like, um, one of them would be cheering and be jumping up and down. And I would be like, well, isn't, isn't, there's somebody beneath you who's playing the game. In theory, they could tell that you're not a, a 98 pound, 21 year old girl, but a 210 pound, six foot two male playing a 98 pound girl. If you're jumping up and down like that and they hear it. Um, but anyway, uh, so I watched, I started watching this show, The Circle. Um, thinking that it was a, a hallmark of the decline of Western civilization. Uh, what I discovered, well, I mean, I didn't discover, I guess what it was a, a more of a personal discovery was I found it interesting because, um, one, there was like a little part of me in the back of my head that was thinking uh, at some point the the, game, the circle is going to kill one of these people. <laughs> so I, I had like, I, I had some uh, saw hangover lingering in my head. Um, and I was just thinking, because, you know, they all have these screens in their apartments, which they're you know not allowed to leave. Uh, and these screens will light up with alerts and they'll have to, uh, play games, not unlike, um, Jackbox kind of style, kind of get to know you games, but games that could also reveal, you know, if you're not careful and your catfishing might reveal you to not be who you say you are. Um, so I was watching this show and it's, I mean, it is as, uh, ostensibly as, as horrible as it sounds. However, what kind of hooked me about it was the, the rules, uh, evolve. So, uh, just when the players kind of think they have an idea of what the cadence is there, will, they will introduce a new rule. So, you know, uh, for instance, right, uh, the players are told they're not going to interact with each other face to face. Um, but then like sometimes when someone is booted from the show, they're allowed to go visit one of the other people. Um, and this is a rule that was not known to the players. Um, and you know, in some cases very discomforting, uh, to not know if your strategy is going to backfire because of some new rule that gets introduced, um, some new mechanic. And so I, I kind of thought it was neat. I mean, it really only works for a season because then they went into season two and it's like, I, all right, I've already got, you know, I, I know, I don't, I know not to trust the circle. Therefore, uh, once you know that, you know, um, everything kind of gets thrown out the window and, you know, it's your own lookout. Um, but I did watch a full season of the circle. <sighs> and then I started the second season and I 
one season was enough like um but it was kind of interesting um this is kind of a dry run for tomorrow because it's been a while since i've done a a live stream now and i didn't want to go into tomorrow um with that deficit so for those of you that don't know um i got the johnson and johnson vaccine a week ago um sunday um yeah so nine nine days ago um and they paused it uh because of the blood clot issue um the day after which was which was scary because like uh, you know i woke up of course you know i'm catastrophizing in my head because that's what i fucking do um and i'm thinking as i walk out having just been jabbed i'm like watch they watch they um take this off the market tomorrow for some reason um but it was scary because you know i, I woke up in the morning and there's all these alerts on my phone and of course the alerts don't give you a whole lot of information so the first thing i see are like six alerts that just say johnson johnson vaccine has been um stopped so that was that'll get you out of bed like that that was that was not a morning where i uh my my adrenaline and my blood was pumping real fast um that morning i did not need coffee um but i it, it was bizarre uh so my experience with it was i got it sunday morning i was actually i was gonna get it monday yeah, it doesn't matter i got it sunday morning um and i don't know if it was psychological or, or what but a sunday i felt great like i felt um much better than i had in a while and i'm sure it, it was at least in part psychological i don't know if there's some kind of uh, giddiness that comes with the whatever the rea if if it's possible to have a allergic reaction reaction to a vaccine be uh, giddiness the day of uh, then perhaps i had a little bit of that um and then you know before i found out that it had been paused around 11 30 that night i started to feel like something yeah something was just wrong like i and like you do you know when you're about to get sick you know and, and you're especially if you get that feeling at night and you're like i just know that i'm gonna go to bed i know i'm gonna wake up sick um or you think uh oh, i could flip a coin here there's probably a 50 50 chance that i'm gonna wake up sick here um so i you know went to sleep woke up at 4 a.m sick um and that was before seeing the you know a few hours later i saw the the um, that it had been paused. I think that's the timeline. Maybe it was Tuesday. Uh, it, they might have paused it on Tuesday. I don't know. But um, if they paused it on Tuesday, then that happened, yeah, the day after. But I, So I was sick. I felt ill the day after. I had a fever uh, the day after. Uh, the fever went away the next day, then came back again. Um, but... Like, honestly, I, I, I don't think I felt normal. I don't think I felt like back to full. I, I think I felt like low grade crappy for almost a week. Um, so, you know, obviously I didn't do the podcast and I uh, missed some work. And I watched uh, The Circle and uh, watched or listened to, oh God, Frenemies um, and did all sorts of things that I was 
very embarrassed, be very embarrassed to admit. Um, anyway, um, yeah, I think it, I feel like it took about a week for me to actually uh, feel fairly normal again. And I guess I'm, I'm not outside the window, um, although it, it seems like, I mean, seven cases out of seven million shots or whatever it is, um, and, and one death, I mean, come on, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I understand the abundance of caution, and I'm certainly glad they paused it. But uh, I would, I would feel, I reprimand myself when I start to feel like, oh gosh, I'm, I'm scared, right? Um, and the fact that I kind of feel better over the past few days. Uh, I suppose I'm taking that as a good sign, but then again, I felt pretty giddy <laughs> the day I got it. So, um, do with that uh, information what you will. So, if you haven't seen the circle, I gosh. I would hesitate to say I recommend it. Give it give it an episode, maybe. Oh, the thing is, an episode's not enough. Uh, because I remember after the first episode, I was definitely sort of like, this is horrible. Um, and they're definitely structured in a way. I'll tell you something that's interesting about them, is they're, each episode is an hour long. They definitely structured them uh, in a way that they didn't care about cliffhangers. Um, it wasn't like, maybe, maybe if they chop these into 30 minute episodes at some point, it will be orchestrated that way. But I would notice that they would have these things that would be like cliffhangers, like a third of the way through the show, two thirds of the way through the show, and they'd resolve them immediately, right? When you, there were times where the, the cadence of, uh, when a show would end, signaled me to think like, oh, okay, this episode's over and it wouldn't be. Um, and I don't know if that's uh, because the episodes are actually an hour long, definitely just meant to be just watched in, in one sitting. Um, but they may have some future plans. They may have like, may have orchestrated it so that, uh, at 28 minutes in or whatever, there is a cliffhanger, but since they're an hour long now, that doesn't really mean anything. Um, got to give it, you got to give it a couple of couple of episodes you got to give it enough time for the rules to to start to be switched up and if you haven't seen it i don't want to um spoil how they how they switch up the rules but thinking about it from like a, a game design perspective i was kind of like oh yeah this is actually interesting what they're doing here because this person's strategy is no longer going to be effective based on what they just did or this person that I thought was like really playing poorly, uh, they are going to do well. And it, it's an interesting social experiment because um, it seems like the best strategy uh, in the circle is uh, don't exist. Um, fade into the woodwork. You don't want to be the best. You don't want to be the most popular. You don't want to be the least popular. You actually want to be around the bottom two thirds. Um, seems to be, you know, you don't want to be a threat to anybody. Um, yeah, interesting show. But trash, right? I mean, it's trash. Frenemies is trash. Um, a lot of the stuff that I listen to, watch or listen to is trash. I've been listening to Laird Barron a lot and, you know, I love the guy, but he's trash, right? I mean, he, he's, um, I could listen to Laird Barron books all day. I'm not going to come out of any of them sort of like with any sort of revelatory 
there's not going to be a, a paragraph of prose that um, strikes me in the way that, you know, uh, a Cormac McCarthy passage might. Um, I'm not really going to get that surprised. I'm just sort of in my comfort zone. He sort of represented him and Brian Evanson and uh, that that whole click. It seems like there's this little band of, of uncanny horror authors currently, um, which I could tell you just by looking at my my Audible. Uh, I don't know, right now, yeah, Larry Barron's in there right now. Yeah, so you have right uh, Laird Barron. Oh, I'm rereading and re-listening to uh, Dracula because I noticed that when I had spoken to Nick about it, I'd gotten some of the facts wrong. I was misremembering it. Um, and I love I love the format. Like I'm, I'm really into that. I mean, if you like, you know, uh, Gone Home or or those games where you kind of just explore um, to find out and uncover stuff, and then the epistolary, epistolary, oh gosh, the format of writing wherein it takes the form of letters being written. Um, I think it's epistolary, but I don't know. Um, appeals to that uh, that side of me. Yeah, Larry Barron, Larry Barron, Eugene Thacker, Bram Stoker, Larry Barron, Corinne McCarthy, David Mitchell, Slade House. That was a disappointment. I thought I was going to like Slade House, but it was just like another house that has like a weird nether zone in it and people get sucked into it every certain number of years. Um, Brian Evanson and Paul Tremblay, I, I like both of them quite a bit. Um, I think Paul Tremblay, um, Head Full of Ghosts is pretty good. If not, then maybe some of his short stories. Some of his novels are just not Disappearance of Devil's Rock was poor, in my opinion. Um, fucking Stephen King came out with another new book, um, which I, of course, listened to. And um, as soon as the deadlights make an appearance in a Stephen King book, I, I sort of clock out. Um, I just feel like going to that well right? I mean, Stephen, you've gone to that well for a dozen books and you seem to be leaning on it even more heavily of late. Not everything can be the deadlights. Um, like if you know going into a Stephen King book that the, any sort of question is going to be answered by, oh, it's the deadlights, then it removes a little bit. But, you know, I, I mean, Stephen King is to my childhood, what sort of Cormac McCarthy in, uh, is to me now, or, or more recently, um, I just, like, the story doesn't really matter, right? It's more just listening to that style of writing that is comforting to you. Uh, Ian Reed is another one. There you go. Um, I got a bunch of, like, oh, man, Wow. I've listened to some Michael Connolly. Um, I did uh, r both read and listen to Ant Kind, the Charlie Kaufman book, and I I thought it was okay. I, I wasn't that blown away by it. I I got a little tired of the the humor, the sort of through line of the humor the falling into manholes, um, which I understand it's not meant to be taken at face value. I get it. I just kept getting it and kept getting it and then was like, all right, I'm sick of getting it. Um, yeah, a bunch of stuff here that's not horror. 
Tanana Review, she's great uh, if you're into horror. Um, and then I, you know, I, of course I go back to the uh, early 20th century masters uh, or mid mid 20th century masters Robert Eichmann um E.F. Benson um the guy who wrote the Wendingo who was that Algernon Blackwood what a great name for a horror writer huh um etc and of course yeah like the ray bradbury's and i'm i'm literally just this this is so much fun i'm looking at my what the, you know sam harris is a piece of shit like uh, um <laughs> that that probably seems like a bit of a non sequitur um but man what a what a limp what a wilting lily uh, sam harris is um, I guess that, so there's that other, yeah. So, and when it comes to like this bucket of things that I've been watching and listening to, it includes this, uh, the new, the new age, well, uh, the new gurus, um, the superstars of the Ted talk scene, um, yeah, the Jordan Petersons and the um, Sam Harris's, the Joe Rogan's, uh, the Russell Brands, the Matthew McConaughey. I did see that lovely, uh, thankfully, it was watermarked with a um, late show, Stephen Colbert. <laughs> Um, to let me know that it was not for real. However, I mean, he, there's a pretty good chance he's going to run for governor of Texas, don't you think? I mean, if there was a poll, if you were shown a poll that said that if you ran for governor of, by land, the largest state in, in the United States, um, that you would beat the current governor by 10 percentage points, wouldn't you throw your hat in the ring? And literally, like for Matthew McConaughey, it probably would be, he would literally throw a, a 10 gallon in the ring. I don't know. I might, I don't want to, I don't want him to. Um, oh, tell me that celebrity culture that we're all kind of, I don't know, it's like two sides of the same coin. All right, I'm going to say hello to some people. Oh, look, Maddie was first. Maddie Abyss Hole Records. All right. Ramona Flowers. Hi, Q, A, Q. KJ, hi, Flaglo. Excuse me. This whole records is reminding me of um, something else. I finally got around uh, to watching Lords of Chaos. Um, interestingly enough, because. Uh, Norwegian black metal was used as a topic um, in a book I was rereading. Um, this one, I certainly talked about it quite a bit. Um, yeah, he was using Norwegian black metal um, and the reason that I was rereading this was because I had done a video on the Phoenician Sailor channel about uh, demonology and in kind of looking into demonology before I, I decided to go uh, absurdist with it, right? 
uh, which is the right call, I think. But uh, prior to going absurdist with it, I was like, well, let me brush up a little on uh, some of the stuff that I read as a as a younger lad. <laughs> and um, I mean, this one, I, obviously I didn't read this when I was younger, but uh, he has a section where he's talking about um, black metal with black being, you know, a euphemism for satanic, pagan, or nihilistic, um, tying it all back to like uh, horrors of philosophy, uh, giving it honestly like way more credit than I think it deserves. I'm sure I'll get tons of people mad, but hey, guess what, man, mayhem weren't very good. <laughs> um, Venom, well, Venom, I liked Venom. Um, yeah, I guess it, I, 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 musically, like it didn't really seem like that big of a departure. Uh, I understand philosophically they were billed as uh, very different, but what they were presenting, the finished product, um, the music itself, you know, the important bit, the music, um, didn't seem that different than, uh, you know, Celtic Frost or Death Metal for that matter, right? Um, which, you know, in Miami, <laughs> well, it was more Tampa. Like Tampa, uh, had a pretty big death metal scene. The band, the very band Death, which I think, um, probably coined the term. I don't know if they coined the term black metal, but they were certainly like a early uh, proponent or at the vanguard of the death metal scene. I think they were from Tampa. I could be talking out my ass here. I don't recall enough. And I'm not sure why I got on the subject. I don't know what, what brought me here. Hey, uh, last night... Um, Massage ASMR live streamed, uh, which, you know, it's the first time I think that he has in a while, you know, long time. He put out a couple of like short videos, but uh, it seems like he may be coming back, which would be great because, you know, um, when it comes to just, you know, cut away all the trappings of what ASMR has become and you get down to like the, the, the bare essentials of it where you are in my case, you know, laying in bed, um, with my eyes closed and with earbuds in, and it doesn't matter how good person set is. Uh, it doesn't matter what their costume is. It only matters what they, their voice is like insofar as is it ASMR inducing or not, not uh, do they sound like, you know, uh, Harley Quinn or Alec Hardy or whomever they might be role playing as. Because uh, what I'm saying is, you know, you cut away all the chaff and uh, uh, massage ASMR uh, was definitely, you know, uh, delivering some super high quality, super high quality, um, like roots, roots ASMR, I guess would be the way that I would phrase it. I don't know, you know, when, um, he would, he branched out a lot, like as ASMR, turns into this thing where it's like everybody's got to dress up and everybody's got to be playing a character and everybody's got to have an awesome set and you got to set up your green screen and you got to have lots of you got to do some compositing and after effects and you got everything has got to be better than the one you did last time and that uh, chasing that entire deal um i don't think that was his style i know he tried it a couple times but anyway point being he uh live streamed last night i hope it's a uh, the beginning of him doing it uh, a lot, not necessarily live streaming. It's, I think it's hard to do 
ASMR effectively uh, when live streaming. My my opinion, for me, it would not be good. Like I, I would, uh, because you'd have FOMO, right? You wouldn't want to fall asleep, um, just in case you know they they died while live streaming or something. You know, want to uh, be sure to catch that and record it and share it to all your friends. Um. JM, hello. Celine, good evening. I hey, hate Warp Raven. Joey Barlow, hi. I haven't missed anything. There's no, this is, there's nothing happening here. Oh, Selkie. It's Selkie's birthday. Happy birthday, Selkie. Um, I hope that you're enjoying it. I saw, all right, I saw a picture of you. Um, fuck. Oh man, I saw a picture of you. My dinner with Andre, guy from my dinner with Andre, the guy in uh, Princess Bride, uh, inconceivable guy. I saw you dressed as him. Um, my dinner with Andre. Wallace Shawn, I saw you dressed as Wallace Shawn. It's quite, quite funny. Happy birthday! That for your birthday you were doing, you're doing a role play for your birthday. Is that was that related to that? Of course, Q. Got to, got to put the spin on it. I love it. I love it. Hi, Lexi. How are you doing? Uh, you might be gone already, but uh, if you're not, hello. Um, see, I don't ever find this kind of stuff comforting because there's never, none of these things are instead of. They're all cumulative. Like every day, everyone in the world is presented with a certain number of doors and they have to choose to walk through one of those doors and one of the more than one of those doors, many of those doors, it's a narrow way, right? It's the narrow way. Many of those doors lead to death. Very few of them lead to a uh, continuance of life. So um, anything that throws another death door in my set of doors to choose amongst. Um, it doesn't sit well with me. It doesn't matter uh, really when, obviously, yeah, I want the odds to be as low as possible, but um, I'd rather the odds be zero. Right. Phil, you love, love the background. Yeah, uh, just did a simple... It's a pretty simple lighting setup tonight. Um, it's just one blue LED on the back. And obviously the chair is blue, so I'm orange. I've been going outside. It's been lovely out there. It's been like, um, it was 73 degrees today, sunny. Um, I've gotten a couple of sunburns already, and I'm... Yay. Prippy tea. I don't, I don't think I've uh, seen you before. Hello. Um, glad you stopped by. It's probably not a great stream to pick for a first impression, but i um, glad you're here anyway. GG NYC. I think I don't think I've seen you before either. Uh, but good evening, Chelsea. Hey, how are you doing? Um. Oh, wait a minute. So is this a new name? Do I just do we do I know who you are by another name? I'm guessing. Oh, that's kind, Phil. It's very nice. 
Yeah. Oh, I, hey, guess what? Um, I'm just seeing this now, but there's a, Ecamm has put a ban button next to comments. Alec Moore, please don't call me daddy. Don't like it. Um, wait a second. Wait, is it? No, this is not Lady Nerevar, is it? What? Cawthon, hi, how are you doing? Oh, look, Jason and Michelle are here. My gosh. I gotta jump down to the bottom here in a minute. Um, yeah, there's something, there's something about lo-fi ASMR videos uh, that are, I mean, white noise is, white noise is a thing. I mean, people use white noise to, to go to sleep too. So the white noise introduced by lo-fi equipment can on its own be lovely. <laughs> this is true, right? You see ghost and you see pictures from concerts of ghosts and you're kind of like, and then you hear ghosts and you're like, oh, okay, well, um, all right. I mean, it's theater, uh, teatro, grotesco, whatever. Everyone dies. This is true. Is it? It's the only, it's the only thing we have. You could say, um, that it's reassuring in a way. I mean, you can rationalize it like any way you want, like 30 ways from Sunday. You can talk about how well, you didn't mourn the period where you weren't alive prior to being born. So why are you so obsessed with the, uh, period you are about after you die it's the same you just uh, time is a huge continuum and you exist for this tiny moment in it and there was a an ocean of time before you an ocean of time after you why are you so worried about that one moment it's evolution this is the uh, the curse of evolution i can't i wish i could break it um, wish I could get past it. That'd be fantastic. We'd all be, well, I'd be so much happier and a lot of people would. Um, it, it could affect life in weird ways. I don't know. Um, oh, Jay, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope it's not tied to anything. I mean, anxiety just by itself is horrible, right? But I'm hoping that it is, uh, just, I say just anxiety. Anxiety is horrible, horrible. I've, my anxieties, uh, dictate my life to a very large extent. Um, but I, I hope that that's all that it is. Hextech Gunblade, hi, how are you doing? As usual, love your name, love your avatar. Nobody gets out alive. Chelsea, I'm guessing this was asked before I told, or maybe this wasn't directed at me. Oh, well, not anymore, it's not, is it? It's not really an anonymous business channel now. Oh, good night, Flaylo. And good night, Maddie. It was good to see you both. Hey, colorful dreams. Yeah, Q, you and me both. Um, 
And I, I don't think like like that argument about like well, you know, um, you're always saying that you wish you were never born. So why do you care about you know dying? They're different. They're very different things. Uh, you can't call something into existence. It's like saying like just because you're someone's mother, you have the right to to kill them because you brought them into existence that's obviously not true um there is a difference between wishing that you were dead and wishing that you had never existed and you cannot achieve having never existed and it does not follow that you should then be desirous of being dead right um but it does seem to be a point that a lot of people conflate. Um, and I think when it comes down to it, right, no matter what, you know, when you, when you rationalize it however you want, do whatever you want, you know, when the moment comes, we are all probably not going to be prepared for or react the way that we think we are in fact i mean our higher brains will just probably just shut off and we will react like animals uh, trying to preserve our lives um so and i don't think that that's uh, and i think you can be like so i i'm here's something i hate this idea that the last thing is the thing that matters or the last thought is the thought that was the true thought if you go through your entire life an atheist and 10 minutes before you die you convert to christianity you're an atheist right so um fear of death could cause you to do all kinds of things so you could go through your whole life um, not being afraid of death. And you could say, I am not afraid of death. And you could feel that you are not afraid of death. And then death may come and you may be, you know, scared out of your pants, right? You still lived your life unafraid of death. I know there's like this thing, like every time you say goodbye to somebody, make sure that you tell them you love them because what happens if you die or, or they die? Aren't they going to know? But to me, that's, I mean, I, I get it. I get the principle of it, but it doesn't make any sense. Like, I, I just think it's silly, right? Um, if you love somebody, they know that you love them. It's not based on the very last thing that was said to them. Um, there should be no more, like, don't, don't arrange the chronology and importance. Those things are not I understand maybe the last things, the last words that somebody says, they, they have some more importance. They, they resonate. They, you don't forget them because they're the last things that this person said. But good Christ, man, if you're evaluating somebody's life based on uh, their last sentence, then, you know, you're going to have a lot of, a lot of people who, well, I'd like to think maybe you'd have a lot of people who would, you'd be like, wow, that person was a deep philosophical, philosophical thinker uh, based on their last words. But maybe the day before they were watching the circle and saying, oh man, you kicked Alana off because she's a model. What do you, why are you judging based on looks? Why? You know, why, why does everybody think Chris is a catfish? Oh, PG, good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. So it's nice to see you. Oh, yeah, it is 420, isn't it? I do not partake, but uh, I hope you are all enjoying your for 20. Hey, Nick. Is this the Nick I know? Uh, either way. Hi, Nick. 
Anyway, I don't want to go too long or too much into stuff because then I won't have things to talk about tomorrow. Um, I just wanted to hop online, say, yo, make sure everything was working all right. Um, think of this as a dry run. Wait, no, this is Nick, right? We got Nick's, I got Nick's coming out of, out of the woodwork. Reminds me of the uh, kids in the hall sketch. The Daves I know. Wait, okay. So I, yes, okay. I know this Nick too. We all, I know both of these Nicks. These are the Nicks I know. I don't think I know any Nick or Nicholas's in real life. Isn't that fascinating? Truly, truly fascinating. Hello, Nasha. You got here just in time. been watching a lot of um, reaction videos I can't stop I don't know what to do about it into I'm I look at all of the interstellar reaction videos and then I jump to the part where um, without spoilers I jump to the tesseract part and then I see if the person cries and if they're not crying I judge them um, I find I try to find like weird there's there was a one of the really good drummer from Drumio, Larnell Lewis, um, had never heard the Metallica song uh, Enter Sandman. They played it for him once and then challenged him to play it and he just pl he played it and he literally like just missed like one beat and and a little bit at the end. Um and didn't even break a sweat. It was uh, interesting to see. And so I watched people's reaction to that. The uh, leprous song, The Sky is Red. That's, I've been watching reactions to uh, Bard. I forget the drummer's last name, but um, been watching that. He, that drummer, Bard Colton, I think is his name, uh, was like playing a few years ago prior to joining Leprous was playing in the streets, uh, just like with his drum kit, just in the streets of Norway. Um, and he was incredible. And, you know, somebody must have seen that YouTube video. And when an opening came up, uh, he was able to, to jump into to Leprous. And he's a great fit because... I spent most of my time listening to that song trying to figure out the time signature. Um, whoa. Um, Nick, I don't know what you're talking about. S spill it. Spill it. Yes, I have played Control almost all the way through. I didn't finish it ultimately because, man, I was playing on a PS4. 
and playing that game on a PS4, not a pro, is really, really painful, really, really difficult to do. I don't recommend it. Um, it, it like at the worst moments, you know, you, you get all these uh, dudes sort of, oh, oh, Derek Chauvin, yeah, I talked about that a little bit already. Um, yeah, we still gotta wait for the sentence, sentencing, though. Oh, that's so out of tune. Yeah, once the sentencing... Oh, look, Jessica, hey, haven't seen you in a while. Um... That's, that seems to be where, like, this is the position we've been in before, where it's just been like, okay, yeah, guilty. And then the sentence comes down and it's uh, the minimum possible. Although I'm hoping uh, this judge did not seem particularly sympathetic um, to Derek. So, and I mean, it's murder. It's not like manslaughter where you, where you could maybe even like not do time right um, every every note is a little bit out of tune play pipe I won't sing it I'd have to practice it this is also the wrong guitar for it I will do that at one at some point, uh, Q, if you would like. Um, but I'd have to practice it because I don't even really remember it. Uh, yeah, I don't remember it. Um, see his reaction to the verdict. I hope he was, um, I mean, I, God, I kind of hope he, was he, I mean, he was standing. I, I hope he almost fell or lost his footing or, yeah, I don't, I, I have no sympathy for 
the guy. This guitar's out of tune, and I apologize. anything um yeah good night amy but what i was going to talk about and what i want to talk about a little bit more uh tomorrow is oh no does this mean his reaction was just like was his reaction just like stoic chin up like like that like tough guy hey Ava how are you doing I like your new okay looks like a photo filter right looks good These are jerks. Now here we get ah, God, just need to not pick up a guitar if I have not prepped to pick up a guitar. Um, well, see, Nash, I see, I would believe tears, but they would be selfish tears. Uh, I would just believe that he was crying because his life was over. I don't think that he would, you know, be crying um, because he felt any kind of remorse or anything like that. Except for the remorse of getting caught, which, you know. It's funny, the number of people and, like, things that I've noticed from Brittany uh, since learning. And it's not just Xava either. There's somebody else in chat who lives in Brittany. Uh, oh gosh, I for, I forget who, um, but I've just like it's funny how and I know it's association, but it's just odd how that has like stuck out to me. I'm like Brittany, yes, I know, I I know somebody who lives in that region. Yes, there's uh, trellises everywhere and wine grapes growing everywhere, and fields of flowers as far as the eye can see, and rolling hills and. People wear big floppy hats and uh, or berets, and man, the food is good. <laughs> I think I think it's with a reasonable amount of confidence that we know that if Nasha goes down for something. She's definitely gonna, she's gonna leave us with some pearls, right? Like when we were talking about like last words, uh, I bet you Nasha's last words would be, you know, last words are memorable. I bet you Nasha's last words would be exceptionally, exceptionally memorable. Um, I'd like to hear them, but not in the context of them being last words. Like I'd like to hear them just so I knew what they were. I don't want Nasha to utter her last words. Certainly, the vast majority of people in this chat will outlive me. Hey, Lisa, how are you doing?
For some reason, I thought there was colorful dreams. Um, but maybe that was just something I, it may have even been like something at work or someone I know or I, I, I don't know. But uh, the region was never like something that I, I heard a lot about. And then for some reason, uh, which I know, I know, like I said, it, I know it's association. Um, I started noticing it a lot more uh, after. Hey, y'all, if you, wait, is this going to work? No, that's not going to work. I gotta get all this stuff set up again. Mm. What a bummer. Um. <laughs> if Cheshire cats and If I mess up enough, it won't get copyright hit. Actually, I, I think you guys are going to love this. These things. They're so wonderfully colorful. In addition to... So satisfying to ah, I love that. There's definitely something wrong with me. Alright, here, let's do this one. Come on, yellow. What are you doing? Yellow, it's your fault. And then when you have the open, of course, you have to tenant. Oh, that doesn't sound like tenant. Wait, why is this not sounding like tenant? Something has changed. All right, here we go. They were too long. Now it sounds like tenant. Wow. 
What is up with that? That's the best. That's. I could just do that all night. But yeah, I wanna. I wanna save some of the wonderful joy. Um. Uh, I don't know that they're the, yeah, I, I don't think so. I, I think the first part is no, and the second part is uh, also no. I don't think it's, I don't think this is an either or proposition. I think they're memorable because of the people, people associating them with uh, your death, not your death, Nick, uh, death. Hey, Michael, uh, be good. Um, but it's good to see you. This is, look, hey, it, if I'm not messing up because of the copyright, if I'm messing up because I'm just messing up, it's just, that's still a clever out, isn't it? Hey, Caron de la de lit. Caron, I'm always going to forget how to say that. Yeah, everybody likes the tubes. You like the tubes because they're, I don't know, there's something, I can't explain it. I, I don't know myself. Um, but anyway, uh, like I said, this is just a sort of dry run for tomorrow where I would like to talk a bit about um, the idea of will and representation, um, not, we can cleave from the, from the Schopenhauerian, uh, will and representation. And there's all, oh, there's also, uh, the writing contest. I've been thinking a lot about the writing contest and I'll tell you what I've been thinking right now. I don't want to judge and I want to, I want to give away, like, I want there to be some incentive, incentive to, to write, but I don't want to judge them and I don't want anyone else to judge them either. So I think what I'm thinking is, yeah, there'll be prizes, um, money, money prizes, I guess. Um, but ultimately it'll just be like, as long as the story as long as the, the written story fulfills whatever the criteria are, and I'm thinking, ideally I'd like to keep them pretty short. So I'm thinking like uh, three to 5,000 words um, uh, in any format you want and in any any genre that you want. Although, like I said, oh my God, my hair is going nuts. Um, although, of course, I you know personally love uh, uncanny short fiction, um, do what you, do what you like. Um, and then have some randomized way of picking, uh, the winner, but ideally reading them. And I'd like to be able to read, um, one that fits on my other channel, um, on the Phoenician sailor channel, uh, which but that, that's like a, that's an up in the air kind of thing. I'm not sure about that. Um, it, it would have to fit like in order for that to, ha I'm, I'm not going to read a story that's like high fantasy, right? Like that's, that's cause that's just not, it's not on brand. Right. Um, but that shouldn't matter for, for this part of it. So I have not forgotten about that. 
Um, I'd like to hash it out with y'all as well and exploiting. Am I exploiting? Wait, what I do? Oh, Nasha. Nasha's. Yeah. Like, and you can't, you can't be like, okay, here's the word suck it, you know, 1500 times or the two words suck it 1500 times the end and then say it's a performance art piece you know I'm, I'm i reserve the right to be able to say you know maybe this wasn't written so well but the effort was made and therefore it, it is valid and hey this was just done to to f with me um so i would reserve this the sole right to be able to basically to weed out whatever uh whatever clever tricks nasha is thinking of right now um this is just it nasha i, I bet you you could but i also bet you there's a part of your brain that's like i want to i want to somehow break the rules <laughs> well now you, now you can't do it now you'll have to use a different phrase <laughs> um so anyway, I, yeah, I do want to do that. I haven't forgotten about it. I know it seems like I have, but uh, really like what was getting to me about it was like, I'm not going to say this is my favorite or I think this one is the one that des deserves to win. I just didn't want to do that. So as long as it fulfills the basic criteria, essentially it's a raffle at that point. Um, you can reserve the right... And you can spell it with a, without the W and adding a G and an H. You, you can do that, but I reserve the right to not have that story be part of the raffle. Z. <laughs> um, and yeah, I guess I was thinking like 200 bucks for the winner and maybe a couple of runner-ups, uh, like 100 bucks for a couple of runner-ups, something like that. Um, gotta I gotta figure that out. I gotta check with my accountant uh, to make sure that I, that's okay for me to do. And I want to be sure that there's ample time. Like I don't want to tomorrow say, okay, have them in by next week. Um, <laughs> everything would have to be judged on its own. So I will be doing judging. The judging that I'll be doing is, does this qualify, does this fulfill the criteria as a valid entry, not how good is this relative to the other entries, right? Um, well, you know, we say this, you know, one of, one of the greatest uh, shows of, one of the greatest scenes sort of showing um, how much you can say without saying anything is of course the scene in the wire where they go to where d'angelo barksdale um killed somebody and it's uh mcnulty and the sergeant and they're just kind of going around the apartment the only word they say for like a minute is fuck but they're like you know they're kind of looking around and they just say it in different ways and they're just like fuck and it tells the it tells an entire story with that word if you haven't watched the wire it, like that's a good scene like i don't know if you could just search youtube fuck scene in the wire or something um and uh it's amazing like you know what can be what the story that is told between the words and with the inflection and with the uh, uh expression and what they're saying and not the words they're saying but how they're saying it and, and their actions for that scene it's neat yeah my accountant my accountant mr block mr uh hr block um hey I I'm all for being rickrolled if it's a it's if it's done like in a clever way right um, 
absolutely fine with that. I love meta stuff. You want to see something? Do you want to see something? I'm going to show you something before. Hold on. Before I sign off, I, can I, I can stand up. You're going to see these embarrassing shorts that I'm wearing. Look at these. They're, uh, they're stri pinstripe shorts. They're horrible. Hold on. I just stepped on them. I just ruined. Fuck. I just ruined some of these things. Um, so I was. Damn it. I was talking to my son about. Um, like, he loves writing comics. He loves writing them, drawing them. Um, he likes like words. And so I was trying, you know, I'm trying to get him interested in words and different properties of words. And one of those early things are, you know, palindromes or words that are homophones or like things that mean one thing backwards and another thing forwards. And um, so one of the things that we were looking at was like, uh, there's a comic book he likes that was like evil. It had evil in the title. It was one of those like Captain Underpants type comics or something like that. And um, we were trying to figure out things about the word evil. And so he wrote this. So he's like, oh, look, evil backwards is live. And then devil is putting the D on the front of evil. And so this is like what he presented me with. Devil live, devil lived. And I was just kind of like, oh, that's that's my boy. <laughs> that's, that's definitely my boy. And when his mom came to pick him up, I uh, showed it to her. And uh, she wasn't quite as impressed. <laughs> but I think it was the subject matter. I don't think it was... Uh, I think I think secretly she was impressed. I think she just doesn't want him going into school saying, "Hey, live backwards is evil," or you know, whatever. That. Oh, hey, Leo. Oh, by the way, I'm I'm gonna mention this um, tomorrow, but I'm going to be so Leah is going to be putting on. I don't know the details of it. Yeah, it's it's a Jurassic Park uh, play that's going to be done Sunday night and I'm going to get to play. Uh, it, it, it's not Jurassic Park. It's, it's, a, it's like a fan fic version of Jurassic Park another time. Um, and uh, I get to play Ian Ma Malcolm, Ian Malcolm. Right. So I'll be there that night. Um, but I'll mention that tomorrow. Like and this is this is just a this is just some shenanigans I'm doing right now. <laughs> Performance art. No, I thought we were. Mm, we, we were like a mutual admiration society band, I think. I really liked um, uh, the guitar player and the drummer and the bass player. And, um, I don't know if they liked me as much as I liked them, but I very much liked them. Um, the guitar player went on to play in Killer Be Killed uh, and Moon Destroys and... Uh, Monstro, which is basically, yeah, he was playing in a band with one of the guys from Mastodon and uh, Max Cavalera from Sepultura. Um, so that was kind of neat. Um, 
Wait, what? Man, this is my, this is like my nightmare. I don't want to die on the toilet. Like, it's just, it, it's funny. Like, I've had moments where I was worried about, about dying. And the things that I thought about were like, um, oh my God, my, my house is a mess. <laughs> right? Oh my God, there's underpants on the, on the ceiling fan. Um, is, do I know you? Is this Henry? I wonder if this is Henry. Huh. If that's Henry, hi, Henry. It's been a long time. Um, Henry, fantastic bass player. Um, and I played with him in a couple of bands. If that's Henry, I don't know. Let me know if it's Henry or not. Oh, gosh. Well, I know this guy. Anthony. I miss Anthony. Look, so, okay, so Anthony and Henry, you guys are both, are both here together. So two people from my past here. And John Anthony is, Anthony is referring to uh, the times when there were a bunch of times, well, a bunch. There were several times where I slept in my car in the uh, emergency room parking lot because I was afraid I was going to die. Right, yeah, the vagus nerve and all that. Or, but the way I look at it is, you know, I, I just want to eat a lot of fiber. I don't want to be bearing down. Um, and really, like, yeah, like, if I get to the point where bearing down to go to the bathroom is the most physical exercise I ever get, um, that's... That's sad. I mean, I, I, it happens, right? Like I, I hurt myself on my scooter three weeks ago, um, and I still my left leg. I'm still limping on my left leg. That's that should have healed in a couple of days. Henry and uh, Anthony, I'm wearing a I'm wearing a, a torch torch shirt, authentic. Authentic torch shirt. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. Henry, tell him I said hi. Um, wow. Yeah, and when I was in Miami, I, uh, sorry, uh, I know like a lot of people here don't uh, know what I'm talking about, I think, but um, when I lived in Miami, just recent, no, comparatively recently, um, four years ago now, um, Carl was there. We almost met up, but we didn't. I did meet up with Juan, uh, but I didn't meet up with Carl. Um, anyway, I didn't know. Wow. So Henry, I played with Henry and Henry, you'll be interested to note that, uh, the people in the discord here have, uh, uncovered a kite as a victim and uh one of them even bought it the cd i don't have the the home cd um so uh yeah this this person here uh, played bass in a kite as a victim um and maybe the less said about that band the better do y'all know miami do y'all know I was um, from Miami? <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, I want to do the the r rules for the writing contest uh, tomorrow. Yeah, right. Yes, 
That is the acronym for a kite is a victim. I guess it's not an acronym. It's an initialism. Well, no, you can say a kiav, right? So it's an acronym. Um, so we'll do the do the rules tomorrow. Uh, I want to go into the whole will and representation thing tomorrow, um, specifically the part that we talked about. I, I don't know, like maybe a dozen episodes ago or something, where it was basically. So, you, you know, you have the will, which is the thing in and of itself. And then you have the representation, which is our interpretation of the thing. And those are not the same. Oh, more Florida people. Nick. Swamp life. Yeah. I, I, I miss it often. Leah, yeah. So it's a writing contest. Um, do you do any writing, Leah? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go over the rules, uh, tomorrow and, um, post them on Instagram, etc. But yeah, I'm thinking like having, uh, I don't know, like a $200 prize for the winner and then a couple of runners up for like a hundred bucks or something like that. Just... Enough to make it kind of worth your time. It's not, I don't even know if that, that doesn't really make it worth your time. Um, it's just if you want to know it, if you want, if you want to do it, um, don't do it for the money. Because then I'm going to take that work and I'm going to read it on my channel and uh, <laughs> reap the, the massive YouTube dollars that I get uh, from having a video get... Uh, somewhere between 15 and 40,000 views, which is uh, not much at all. You know, buy a, a cup of coffee. Anyway, it's now I feel like I feel kind of exposed and embarrassed that I have multiple people from my past in the chat. Um, So I'm going to sign off because I'm also tired. And I didn't, like I said, this was more of a, it's been a while, got vaccinated. Um, I was feeling cruddy. I had to miss an episode. I had to miss a week. Um, I'm feeling better now. Um, I think, I think I probably like, Part of me is like, I feel better because I've been able to go outside quite a bit and get a bit of sun and stuff. But um, regardless, I wanted to do this so that come tomorrow, there wasn't like all this kind of added pressure that I put on myself um, because I hadn't done it in two weeks now or something. So anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful night, Nick. All the Nicks. I hope all the Nicks have a good night. I hope the Nashas have a slightly less good night, but still a good night. But, you know, a little bit. Nick, it was my only dose. I got Johnson & Johnson. Uh, thus, the solution and the fear. And, yes, I got the JJ. And let's leave it at that. <laughs> all right. Um, good night, everybody. I hope to see you all tomorrow. If I don't, then I will see you again soon. And uh, I hope you all are well and stay safe.